Hey, I'm Aunt Defoe, Bassmaster Elite Series Pro, and I'm standing right here beside my Tracker Aluminum boat. Whenever I set this boat up, it was with the intention of using it in real shallow waters and places that are real hard to get into, and we have a lot of that where I live in East Tennessee. But if you've got a boat like this and you've done some of the things I've done to it, you can go almost anywhere in it. And there's a lot going on back here. I've got a lot of different things happening. One of the most obvious, I've got two 10-foot talons back here. And I actually don't have them mounted on, on tilt brackets like I do on my bass boat. The reason because with them set where I like them, they're actually lower than the engine. Once I put them up there and I saw that they were going to be lower than the engine, so uh, there's really no need me even installing the tilt brackets because if I can't get these under it, the motor ain't going anyway. So on down here, I've got a set of Lenco electric trim tabs. What those trim tabs do is they really make the boat run flat. The flatter that boat's riding, the more engines out of the water and the higher the boat's gonna be out of the water. So one of the biggest parts of getting in shallow water for this boat is this Atlas jack plate from TH Marine. I can run this full up and still keep 25 pounds of water pressure and have control of the boat. That's due to the way that tunnel's designed and how tall it is. Now the tunnel hole, that is the part that's that was welded into this boat. Everything that we did back here on the back was to get that engine up that high below the bottom of the boat. I'm here at the console now. You know, we've got the two factory seats that came in this boat. And this storage area was already here, but adding these access hatches from TH Marine is, is a lot easier way and a lot drier way to have access to that storage. You can see I've got a little bit of everything in there, including the most important thing you can have in a bass boat. Here at the driving console, of course I've got a Humminbird Onyx 8, and then these switch panels here, these come from TH Marine. If it's got a live well, it's going to have a pump to fill it with, but that's probably it. It's, most aluminum boats don't come factory with a recirculation pump, and they don't come on a timer either. So what I ended up doing, I wired up these aeration pumps. Uh, on this timer from TH Marine. That way, you don't have to run those pumps constantly. You know, most of the time, it's not gonna be in real hot weather when I'm using this boat, and I don't need to run those pumps 24-7. I can just click that on automatic and keeps my fish alive. There's no worry about it, and no worry with running your, your battery down that way. I've um, got my talon switch here, Mercury Smart Craft gauge there. Having that Mercury Smart Craft gauge is actually really important to me on this thing because it tells me exactly how many gallons per hour I'm burning it came with a 19 gallon fuel tank, so I've got a pretty good range, but if I back off about a couple, about 500 RPMs, I get another gallon per hour out of the engine. So I can manipulate that a little bit, and having that smart craft gauge really allows me to see just what I'm doing to get the most fuel economy to be able to get where I'm trying to go. Uh, I've got my Atlas jack plate switch right here, real handy to the gear shifter, and my trim tab switch is right up there. On the side of the console, I've got a tool holder from Rapala. Just a great place to keep your pliers, your scissors. Up here on the front deck, whenever we built this boat, we extended this front deck way back, then actually put a rod box in it. Once I put a rod box in that boat, I said I'll never have another one without it. It's so much nicer just to be able to have those things put up where they're not in the way all the time, and that's what we did in this boat right from the get-go. Again, all these access hatches are from TH Marine. Most of them are just open hatches, except these two in the center and the small glove box over there. These actually come with Plano style trays already in them. And this for me, whenever I got the boat, just loaded these boxes up with, you know, I mean, sinkers, hooks, VMC hooks, range tungsten sinkers, VMC jig heads, all those kind of things. And I'll just, these boxes stay in this boat all the time. And man, it's a river boat. I don't have to have a whole bunch of stuff in it usually, you know, if I'm just going fun fishing around the house. I know the six or eight things I'm gonna have. And this little box here, this is the one that's probably the handiest one up on the front deck because of the size of it. I put the stuff in here that I've been using for the day. You know, I've got chartreuse dye in case the fish aren't biting. I've got some leaves. Having a little catch-all box like that is extremely important. It doesn't matter what kind of boat it is. So I've got two rod straps from TH Marine. It's got a G-Force pull handle on the troll on my Minn Kota 112 trolling motor. Recessed foot pedal. Just like in a bass boat, man, having that recessed foot pedal makes it so much more comfortable to fish all day long. And you heard me say a 112 trolling motor. A lot of people think that may be overkill for an aluminum boat, but fishing in the kind of current I fish in at times, you gotta have it. And there's places I fish where I can't go upstream with even with a 112 on this boat. But padding this front deck was one of the best moves I ever made. The last aluminum boat I had didn't have that padding. And the fatigue that was you'd feel every day at the end of the day was just unbelievable compared to a boat with padding. So whenever I did this one, I made the decision I was gonna, gonna pad the front deck. It costs a little extra money, but man, it's definitely worth it. Part of fishing out of this that makes it, makes it the most enjoyable is the experience of getting there. You know, it's white knuckle driving, 
then you get somewhere, you bump across a few rocks, hopefully you don't do too much damage, then you get to somewhere that hasn't been pressured and catch a bunch of fish. That's, that is a fun day on the river, in my opinion. I hope you like it.